Hey everybody, it's Mr. Brzezat. This video is going to address a different topic than the typical art training that you see in this class. In general, performance this year has been a lot lower than years prior, and so I'm going to train you guys in what are called coping skills and motivation. There are two types of motivation. The one that we desire, the one that we would love to have, is what's called intrinsic motivation. That's where you do something out of a longing joy. That's because the task itself is the reward. If you're intrinsically motivated, you're curious naturally. You have what's called autonomy. That means you do it on your own and don't require prompting. Learning is a joy. Mastering the content is your goal. It's got meaning to you and you love to do this stuff. This would be an artist who signs up for a class and they love to draw and paint and do all of that in their free time. So when they get to the class, it's nothing new. The second type of motivation, it's what's called extrinsic motivation, similar to exoskeleton, outside of oneself. Intrinsic is in, inside. Extrinsic is outside. This is the most common form of motivation that you'll encounter in your life. About 99% of what life throws at you is going to involve extrinsic motivation. You're generally, you're looking at the payoff for the task. The task itself does not generate joy. It's rewards and consequences. Are you going to look good next to your competitors? Money, grades, all of that. The root thinking for extrinsic motivation is risk versus reward. So there's a formula for succeeding extrinsically. That formula is the value of the payoff is also equal to the energy that you're going to expend in order to get it. How bad you want the thing will be shown in how hard you work day to day. Case in point, when I was 13, I really wanted a Super Nintendo. It was awesome. I stuffed envelopes for about one penny per envelope to pay for that. These are the ones that really help you solve those extrinsic motivators. The first one is self-discipline. That comes through trial and error and grinding out failure, success, failure, success. You go into situations, you screw up, you learn how to solve it, and you move forward. Delayed gratification. That's the ability to hold off on what you want now for a later payoff. For example, I've got a student in one of my classes. Instead of doing her homework, she goes home and plays video games all night. What would work better would be for her to use the video games as a reward for doing her homework. That would generate study skills, self-discipline, and the video games would have more value to her. And you guys are kids, all right? You're learning how to do this. That's where your parents come in. Here's a big one. There's a really great TED Talk that covered this. The number one determining factor for students, even in poverty areas, overcoming their circumstances and having success is grit. That's the ability to endure hardship. When life smacks you in the face, do you fold? Do you cave in? Or do you take the hit and move forward? Because the payoff is what you're shooting for. Goal setting, time management. So you want a certain grade. You want a Super Nintendo. What's it gonna take to get it? And not only that, can you break that into small benchmarks to know that you're doing well towards getting that goal? If you look at how fast you're working, do the math, you can calculate exactly how long it's going to take you to finish something. That's time management. And then you make the big decisions on what you need to cut and what you need to add to the time to work on something to get it done. When you're in the thick of it and life's smacking you around, one of the things you can do as another coping skill is look towards your future payoff. Uh, and that will drive you to overcome immediate hardship. You're trying to learn skills to better yourself. Look ahead and ask yourself when you want to quit, what would your future self say about that? While you're thinking about giving up, what would your future self say? What would you say to yourself in the past? Positive self-talk is a big one. I see this all the time because I teach skill-based content, all right? A lot of people go in and they say, oh, I can't do this. Well, you might as well not. You've just made the decision that you can't. You've just lowered your ceiling of potential by personal choice. If you've made the decision, to give up before you've even started, that's quitting. You need to tell yourself, yes, I can do this, and look back to earlier successes that you've had. And it's crazy. I've had some students earn A's on early exercises, and then when stuff gets tough near the end of the semester, they totally forget all their earlier success. They say, I can't do it, and that impacts every future exercise. You need to tell yourself, I did it before, I can do it again. One of my instructors earlier in life covered this very well. I said, oh man, I'm not going to be able to do this. And he looks at me and says, then you're never going to be able to do it. You've just decided before you've tried that you can't. 
And that stung, and that motivated me to move forward and believe that I could. And guess what? After hard work and practice, I did the task. And so can you. And then managing your thoughts. There are many ways to do that. That's called metacognition, thinking about how you think. If you catch yourself in a rut and you're like, oh, I can't do this, you can think about how you think and go, ah, oh, I'm doing it again. I need to go back and do positive self-talk. So in summary, I would say the formula for this is how bad you want the thing will be shown in the energy you expend in order to achieve it from a day-to-day -day basis. At Jimmy John's, there's a sign there that sums it up very well. If you do the things that you need to do when you need to do them, then someday you can do the things that you want to do when you want to do them. Hope you found this helpful. I'll see you guys in class. Bye-bye.